Good morning, folks. Um, I'm going to do a quick video here. Um, hi there. And I'm going to show me stringing a rope. So I have already preloaded it. Let's see if this shows up, me on my dark top. So this is the row strung backwards. So uh, you'll see what I mean, but this part over here, it's basically going to go like that. So it's all strung out according to uh, of my plan and need to change my glasses because I need my super close happy glasses, which are, you know, oh so attractive, but that's okay. I love these, these frames when I first got them. I really wanted them. Uh, then I found out after I got them uh, that they weren't comfortable. So, um, uh, I sort of retired them and used my uh, backup pair of glasses um, as my main glasses, and that has continued on uh, to this day. I finally decided, well, I'm going to make these some super um, um, strong, what's the word I want, um, like reading glasses, but uh, stronger than anything you can get in the store. Um, and it's, it's definitely a godsend when you're working with beads this small. So as you can see, I'm stringing. Uh, and who knows what I'm going to talk about in this 10 minutes that it takes to do this row or something. Uh, I guess I'll know at the end of this video about how long this takes. But it seems to be taking about 20 minutes per row just to load up the thread and then uh, actually install it on the loom. So this loom that I'm using is a Merix loom. Shout out to Merix. Uh, it's an upright loom and really nice, really precision. Um, not cheap, but um, I decided to take the plunge and, uh, oh gee. April, this is 22 years ago, April, and uh, I've not looked back. Um, if you've watched some of my older videos, I started out with a handmade loom, which, you know, isn't a bad thing if you are on a budget. I took a, uh, a picture frame that was of the size that I thought I would need and a little bit of scrap lumber to make some legs and uh, just did some uh, what I think are pretty innovative ideas to uh, uh, make it work but I basically like took best ideas from um, a lot of different looms that I saw as I was looking at them and thinking oh you know I'd like to buy that but who knows if I'm gonna like this you know am I gonna do one project and go that was too much uh, so I I started cheap and all in all, I think I spent about $10 on that loom. And I did the first two projects on that loom. Um, and it was fine. It had uh, some issues, but nothing that I think, unless you're getting really, really serious into this, that you can't do for yourself. So someday I may make a video on how I made that loom. Um, that wouldn't be a bad idea for somebody that maybe is thinking about getting into this but doesn't want to put a lot of money. I mean, there are a lot of inexpensive looms out there if you're doing jewelry making, uh, bracelets and such, and uh, I think those are absolutely fine. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to go into it whole hog like I did. I knew I didn't want to make jewelry. Um, nothing wrong with it. not that there's anything wrong with it uh it just it wasn't calling me it was doing this kind of work that really from the very beginning was calling me uh so my first piece which is the same image um was done on that loom and i made a lot of mistakes on it and i'm still happy with it, happy enough that it is my YouTube uh, avatar. So if you look at my photo uh, from my channel, that 
is the same image. Um, but when I got done, I saw how I could do it better. So I, uh, uh, I wanted to redo it from the very beginning. I haven't taken down, taken apart the old one. I don't think I will. I think uh, it's, it's going to be a nice little touchstone for me to go, yeah, this is where I started out. And uh, I do have videos on uh, progress on that one. And actually, even on one before that, I did a test project, uh, which was much smaller and using cheap beads, uh, cheap beads that aren't very uh, uniform in size. And, um, and, you know, did okay. But it definitely showed me we're using precision beads like these... Uh, Miyuki's are um, are really uh, are really worth it. I mean, they're 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 not cheap. Um, I don't want to tell you how much this project would cost, um, but you know, hundreds of dollars, definitely, just in materials, multiple hundreds, um, and. And Miyuki also has so many different colors. I think they've got 1,100 colors, uh, give or take. And um, those are different finishes and uh, different effects so that it's not all just, you know, flat, shiny beads and it's not all just uh, uh, solid colors. There's, there's a lot of their colors that are... Um, uh, variegated and uh, matte finishes and uh, oops, almost made a mistake. Would you find out as you're going along that mistakes are inevitable? It's just how you correct them um, that comes into play. And I hope. I've got the same camera angled where you can see it. Because uh, if I redo this, I'll never capture all those, this conversation that I've had. Uh, as you can tell, this is not scripted. This is just stream of consciousness, uh, which is, I think, a lot of fun. Uh, come on, last four. There we go. So, last four. He won't see any problems. It wants to hang out behind the threads. There we go. So all along, I made sure that this this thread going back through was uh, in front of the warp. So the one that goes behind is behind the warp, and the one that goes back through is in front of the warp, and that keeps the um, um, the bead locked in place into its little cage. So then that I've got it in, I'm going to slide it down in uh, textile um, uh, tapestry making your beading that textile in to squash it down as close as you can. These are glass beads. That doesn't work real well. So it's just getting them to an even spot. So I tightened it up, but I didn't tie it off. Uh, and that's just sort of a secret I've found as I'm working along is no reason to tie off each end. And uh, the mistake I had on the first one was doing that and it resulted in the piece having kind of an hourglass shape. Um, so it um, didn't, to me it just didn't look good, it didn't look professional. Uh, so I found if I just leave this end open, uh, and even until it comes off the loom, the, the, first, the first pass, it's tied on. And then I go usually about three passes. That's about the length of thread that I'm happy cutting. Um, and 
and uh, and then that end is not tied on until I'm ready to actually um, start weaving in the thread end. So that's after it comes off. And what that does is allow it to relax a little bit. You can see how it's got this undulation on here. I think I figured it out. I think the spring I'm using is too many dents per inch for this particular um, uh, bead. So uh, it kind of squashes it a little too close together. So the next time I'm going to try with a different size dent, I've got a, an array of these springs uh, that uh, this one is 16 dents per inch, which means 16 threads go into these little bits. And uh, I'm going to try it with the 14 and see if that gives me a better result there. Uh, the worst that happens is it's just spread out farther and, and I've got to play with it a little bit more. So I'll, I'll see what the best thing is. Maybe I'll do an experimental piece on the next one. So there is where we are so far. I, this is row 157. If I was going from the top and I wasn't counting the rows that get turned over to create the tube that the, uh, um, uh, that the, the, the dowel will pass through. So uh, that's it. I think that's all for today. And thank you. And shelter in place. Be safe. And uh, this is something you can take up. Uh, I bought a whole bunch of beads for the next project last night online. Uh, watched a, I saw a good sale come along and I thought, well, I'm going to take advantage of that. So uh, uh, the next project is going to have a lot of different colors. I don't have it handy. I think the um, tripod is sitting on uh, my paperwork right now. Um, uh, but basically I graph this out so I know what color is going where and what colors I need. And, um, and it becomes kind of like a road map. Because uh, yeah, for me to remember, <laughs> for me to remember five minutes into the future is hard, but to walk away from this and uh, um, um, try to remember two months later, three months later, whenever I start that project, I need a map. So um, I have a map and um, it lays out everything um, from top to bottom. I can lay it out to go from right to left, which is the way I strung them onto the thread. Um, but um, it's it's always thinking that not, row one is on the top. So I work from the bottom up generally. It, it's not a rule. It's not anything you have to do. Uh, it just fits me better. Uh, plus this table is adjustable. So as this gets up, to where I'd have to be looking up to see, I can drop the table down and uh, uh, that way keep it sort of in that mid-range line of sight. Um, that's it, I think that's it for today. I think my last video was just a row or two ago with this um, whole thing, I'm telecommuting and it's sort of thrown off my rhythm to where you think I'd have more time, uh, but I'm actually, exhausted after um, getting done with work that I just have set this aside. There's too many other things that I need to deal with. Uh, so since I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't make a living doing this, uh, I can, um, I, I can set it aside. Uh, I know some of you really depend on the, the living that you make from making your jewelry or making whatever you do. Uh, so, um, all power to you and, and, uh, I hope everything goes well. Everybody stay safe and you're going to see a little bit of a trailing, um, bit of just seeing the video while I get up and turn the camera off. Uh, so thanks.